feel like we're ready. Just gonna put on the other one. <laughs> My name is Eduardo Rios Pulgar. I'm a music journalist based in Brooklyn. The New York music scene, per se, doesn't exist because there are so many of them. Let's go. We do reggaeton. We do reggaeton. We do reggaeton. One night, I can go to a punk show and head straight to a rave. Altogether energetically very different and very much rooted in Brooklyn. And I'm about to take you by the hand across my home's musical underworld. Welcome to Beat Bites Offline. Market Hotel is right off Myrtle Broadway on the JMZ. It used to be an old punk house, and now it's become this grimy, incredible DIY venue. I saw Julian Casablanca's play here, Las Rosas, Deli Girls, you name it. The whole expanse of indie rock has passed through this oddly shaped hall and made mosh pits happen. This is like one of my favorite venues. Because it's like not sterile, just like and chill, but also safe and like really good community. And they're just, they're really nice to the performers and the friends that are raging in the pit and it's just like a tiny corner and then the train rushes by and you're like, wah! And then there's like a sea of people freaking out. Yeah. So just, it's lots of fun, more fun. Yeah, we definitely started here. I was like 21, like, ah, screaming a ton, and like crying, like what the is going on? And New York was like, it was a place where I felt super alive. I feel like people will still make space for like, people to scream and let out their angst and stuff. Can I have a hit of that? Um, Smoking's really bad for you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mo, and I'm a local indie rock show promoter. Market Hotel was totally illegal, and then it got very shut down by the police. The people who involved worked on it for two to three years before they could reopen again. So it was really exciting when Market Hotel came back. And they almost didn't even come back at all. There was a point when they reopened, and then they weren't allowed to do shows. So it makes going to a show there really special, because every time you're there, you're really conscious of the fact that it almost didn't happen at all. I think Market Hotel is totally legit venue. It understand what yeah why is not not all venue can say that today, and it, it served the purpose of what this venue was being brought up for because this is like yeah why punk house it was literally a house we used to live here and yeah. produce a bunch of awesome musicians from those years. As a band that's like playing in these venues, like what responsibility do the bands have? It's hard to critique something as you're doing it without seeming cynical and like up your own. But also to not say anything is detrimental to your idea of your position. There's no right answer, but it is like a material condition of capitalism. That is the larger fight. As artists, I think it's important to have a very strong idea of post-capitalist world. That's something that you can do that is beneficial towards the issue of gentrification. Moshing is my favorite part of going to punk shows. It's that feeling of anonymity that makes wandering New York so delicious, but much sweatier. I don't suggest smashing in fur, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You better give me. You better give me. Uh, so we're at Elsewhere right now. It's like one of the most poppin' venues in Bushwick right now. I want to say it just turned a year old. Let's go check it out. I'm Baxter Barber, and I am the talent buyer on One Calendar Master. Like, 80% of the day probably is spent trying to discover new acts, like before the industry kind of gets involved, but like while people are still interested. Just because like once things get hot up in an industry cycle or whatever, like there's a lot of like mainstream music industry people that aren't convinced that like you can sell tickets to a show in Bushwick even though we've been spending years proving that you can do that, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I've been performing in Brooklyn about six years. So that is um, what you do get and what you will see at Elsewhere, which is like one of the most incredible spaces in Brooklyn because Absolutely. it's so big. The sound system is perfect. The lighting system is perfect. To be here with Suzanne Barsha's party in Dreamhouse is really cool because it's a different energy. It's Absolutely. a little bit more queer. It's a little bit more eclectic, a little bit more alternative. Yes. Every look that you're going to get from every person you interview or every person you talk to tonight 
is people going to be in looks, people going to be in full faces of makeup. It's going to be a full vibe tonight. Cool. So. Susanna is uh, she like, is the nightlife. She's, she's the nightlife of the and she's been making these things happen for years and years. And everyone who comes, be it your first time in New York or you've been here for years, you can come here, find something to fall in love with. I'm C.T. Heather. <laughs> uh, I live in New York, and I'm a cross-dresser. Everyone knows me, like, oh, C.T. needs to be butt naked on a bar, <laughs> like, risking his life to dance, like, and everyone, like, that's what everyone knows about me. So, like, majority of my gigs are actually at straight venues. Like, out here, I'm like, I can do, like, I'm like, I'm so chill. Like, it's so fun, like, when I, like, I never want to leave. Like, what you're talking about, like, is propelling itself with such ferocity. I hope it's not because it's, like, a pop culture moment. Mm -hmm. I hope it's because people like respect us for our art form. It's right in the middle of the warehouse district in Bushwick. It's certainly one of the biggest in the area with the most variety of genre. I've seen so many shows here. I've Whatever the reason, I, I always have a good time here. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we're about to get a hollow, and there's a lot of like industrial, like techno, kind of there. <laughs> to kind of like the deeper end, Wilson Avenue, which is where the Unsure parties were happening for a time. That's like warehouse, warehouse. Like those parties are insane. <laughs> I mean, we come out of the womb like dancing, so it's like, you know, it doesn't even matter who's on stage. I like to support local artists uh -huh. because like there's too much support for, you know, top 20 artists. The local artists need to be heard, you know, being a fellow local artist and all the, you know, pain and heartache and tears you put in your art, you know, sure. other people could feel it. about the history of New York and underground spaces and like how CBGB started or something. It feels like this ancient history compared to what happens now. You know, if someone is just starting their project, they're young, they're a group of artists, whatever, they need to find a place where they can feel supported and grow what they're doing, like physically, and not just, not just online. I own and operate the clothing and lifestyle brand Whatever 21. It's a brand that's primarily focused on clothing design, streetwear, mm -hmm. but I use it as a platform for other avenues as well. I've been throwing parties for like eight years now. 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. that was kind of a bit of a golden age. <laughs> and it's felt like it's been in a bit of a decline over the past few years. Like all the, all the DIY venues are all being shut down. There's no longevity. Every party flyer is just like, a reordering of like the same names but I feel like just in the last six months even the like resurgence in the New York City underground I think like certain venues like hollow these are parties that are finding like new exciting artists pushing boundaries and going out to these events I feel like there's a community but I want to give exposure to talented like deserving artists Absolutely. that don't have a platform for their voice and I'm like hey like we're doing this thing like would you like to be a part of it do you feel like this energy can continue yeah, I think it can continue, and I think it can continue into, you know, into good things outside of even just nightlife, music. Hollow parties aren't quite waves, they're like grungy. This is where you meet the emo kids who know how to party. And we are in Williamsburg which was once the bastion of indie rock in New York. And we're gonna go see a show at Baby's All Right, which is ground zero for a lot of artists that are still just on the brink of blowing up, but have not quite blown up yet. Let's check it out. Yeah. I've been here now six years since we opened, and I run the security for Baby's All Right. I could say five years ago we had Artists like Mac DeMarco play, Beach Fossils, No Name. Just a year and a half ago, we had Billie Eilish perform here. I make dance punk music, and I'm also a labor organizer. Also a member of the punk band Downtown Boys. 
I, I'd done more like conventional drag performance for a while mm -hmm. since I was like in my late teens. Like sure. drag doesn't just need to be, yeah, like lip syncing and you know, a certain kind of makeup and a certain kind of appearance. As musicians, most of us are working people also. Like you don't have agents, if you don't have publicists. DIY places are like where you can do stuff. It's like what makes culture possible at that level and in an increasingly corporatized world, increasingly like unequal world and stratified world that carries down to the music industry. Absolutely. You need that that stuff. Like that's where the beautiful things come out of, you know. So our booker books the act, then they'll confirm it and send it over to me and they'll be like, alright guys, let's make a marketing plan. I guess people don't really think about that as much and they just think it's like, oh vibes, but no man, it's Excel spreadsheets. I guess we're kind of like a good middle ground, very established, but like good for underplays. Because like up and coming bands of like maybe bigger acts also people play at babies. Acts that are about to break as well. Yeah, That's a big absolutely. thing. Like I actually just saw on Enemy posted this article about Billie Eilish. Yeah. And, like they opened it, they're like, oh yeah, um, we first met her when she played at babies, and she was actually that was her first booking show. You have people who are creative coexisting with these communities that were already here that are kind of slowly being pushed up. Do you feel like there could be a harmony between those two? We invited people from the community to come and enjoy a show and have a free drink, have some food. So, you know, little by little, we started reaching out. Like, I seen the neighbor's kids grow up. I think music and alcohol is universal. It doesn't <laughs> have any race. A few years back, you would never think that you could go to a concert and you would see a disco band open up for a hip hop artist. Oh, you, you're gonna go home, you're gonna be like, dude, I'm gonna go back to baby. Security was nice, bartender was great, the show was amazing. I got to see three different genres in one night, you know? <laughs> the dream is dead. <laughs> the foam, damn. Even on a Saturday afternoon at a benefit show and even in a very different, sanitized Williamsburg, the vibe here is epic. It always is at babies. Salton Room is a new venue that popped up right off the Jefferson stop on the L. I, I, I don't even think it's a year old. And they're killing it with bookings. A lot of higher tier like alternative rock acts mixed with like local groups from around the neighborhood. This is like the heart of Bushwick. Yeah. You know, just like right off Wyckoff. A bunch of like bars and music venues and other different types of things. So, I mean, they opened up in a really interesting area and I think that it's really cool that they're trying to cater to different types of music and different types of people. But that's also because um, the bookers here, they try to keep it very diverse it's as far super, as like to be able to have a space and harbor big artists, but then also at the same time, you know, local artists. I think that that's, that's the point. Let's do that on multiple different levels. Absolutely. A lot of people came from somewhere else to New York to pursue whatever dream it was of theirs. But we all came here for the New York energy. Do you want to be surprised and say, man, only in New York could something like this happen? New York, I think, had the reputation of being the forefront of all culture. That's been less so, I think, as of late. It's hard to name the definitive musical output of New York. Music is a thing that requires space. You require a place to practice, you require a place to meet other people and do the thing that you do. When you don't have that, the scene has a harder time forming. Fast forward 10 years from now, my definition of success is if we were able to impact culture in a positive way and create you know, the next legendary scene, those adventurous, wild, young artists, for them to be able to do that. They can't do it without the support. The first ever show yes. at the Sultan Room. First band here, first band getting that this experience. It was it was awesome. We've been performing uh, around like in other venues in, in Bushwick, so I, I guess they they contacted us because of that. Think of like Latin music. They're finally starting to get a little bit more recognition. We're very excited to be like in this moment where that type of music is like recognized outside of the Spanish-speaking um, world. Absolutely, yeah.